Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is October the 5th, 2020. Let's talk NFL football, futures. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say, four weeks have passed in the NFL. You know, I personally feel that the way to make money is to bet on futures. For example, if you look at my videos from last year in the NFL, you'll see that I recommended that people take the San Francisco 49ers, at least add them to their betting portfolio, when they were going off at 22 to 1. So, of course, by the time the Super Bowl came around, Right? You had an excellent opportunity to make money because you already were getting 22 to 1 on the San Francisco 49ers. Right? So that gave you an opportunity to pour more money on the Chiefs. Right? If you had futures on both sides, you were able to adjust the risk because some of the bets you got it, before the playoffs had huge leverage on them. So that gives the gambler more say in how they structure bets, right? You can put it together in a way where you cash in if a team wins the division, wins the conference, goes deep in the playoffs where you have a team on one side of the ledger that has huge leverage. So you understand, you know, even if the team I want to bet on, the other team, loses the game, I'm still alive with a high leverage play. So right now, you have some talented teams out there. Talented teams. Some have started a little slow, but they're well positioned, either because of a weak division or because of young talent that now is asserting itself or depth that's now asserting itself. And of course, now's the time to clean up. In other words, now's the time to get huge odds, huge odds on quality teams well in advance of the playoffs. Understand, if the team is in contention, it doesn't even have to be in the playoffs. Late in the season, you can then just randomly bet against them knowing that if they win, you're still alive with a leverage play going forward. Now, the bet I like to focus on are, in terms of futures, odds to win the Super Bowl, right? The reason is simple, because you're getting better odds than if you just took the team to win the conference or win the division, right? Let me let you in on a secret, too. You can always hedge out of the play later. In other words, if I have a team to win the Super Bowl, but I don't believe they can win the Super Bowl. I believe they're just live to win their conference. Then, of course, should they win the conference, I could always take the other team to hedge out of the Super Bowl part of the bet. More importantly, the odds you're getting because they'll extrapolate them. In other words, they'll give you certain odds to win the conference. Then they'll add another 50 plus percent to that on the odds to win the Super Bowl. So what I found is that if your team ends up winning the conference, my goodness, at that stage, you couldn't get the leverage to win the Super Bowl that you can get now by taking the Super Bowl prop. So let's talk about some teams that are dangerous, where they've proven themselves. You look at the team, you're noticing the superstars, and of course, the casinos giving you long odds. Now we're gonna focus on an overseas book, Overseas by American Standards. It's innertops.eu. Now let me just say, you're assuming all of the risks here. You need to check the laws of your jurisdiction to make sure that it's legal for you to bet on intertops.eu. 
right? I'm not going to get more provocative here and talk about Bitcoin, offshore, remote sports books, and stuff like that. I'm going with a sports book that actually is legal in Germany. In other words, there's some government oversight, right? Well, let's just name some teams, and you want to throw just a few dollars on each team just to have the leverage, just to have that base covered, right? You understand that. It's just to have that base covered. Now, let's just name some of the picks. Again, these are teams that may have started slow, but you see the talent. Is there anybody watching this video who does not see the talent with the Dallas Cowboys? I know the Eagles beat San Francisco last night and technically lead the NFC East. I'm not saying the Cowboys even win the NFC East. But folks, after four games, the Cowboy passing attack is such that Dak Prescott just set the record for the most passing yards after four games. That's how lethal the passing attack is. Let's also talk about Dak Prescott. There's some people I trust, I believe in, I follow, who don't believe in Dak Prescott, right? Fox Sports' is Colin Cowherd. And of course, he has this narrative going of Dak's a good, not a great quarterback, right? Look, gambler, let me just say this. The brother threw for well north of 4,000 yards last year, right? He's on a record-setting pace this year with a new coach who happens to be a quarterback guru. Let's stop kidding ourselves for our purposes, which involves winning games. Dak Prescott's in the top third of the league. Let's face it too. The Cowboys have found money, right? They pick up Alden Smith, who's been out of the league for years. Alden Smith is now among the sack leaders of the NFL. Think about that. Also, aren't you surprised by how deep the Cowboy wide receiving core is. I remember when Cooper used to be the only wide receiver the Cowboys seemed to have. Now you got C.D. Lamb. Now you got Gallup. Right? Let's just say the Cowboys, who are, let's be clear here, half a game out of first place in their division. Right now that team is going off at 28-1. to 1. You heard right. 28 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. Again, 28 to 1. Folks, you're not going to get cheap prices like this again. At least you may not. Right? 28 to 1. Throw a couple of dollars on the Cowboys. Understand, if they get back in it, and again, they're only half a game out of first place after the first month. Right? You win the NFC East, you're in the playoffs. Cowboys are 28 to 1, need to be part of your betting portfolio. Let's talk about the other team in the division that seems to be challenging them for division supremacy. No, not the Washington football team. No, not my New York Giants. We're talking about the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, the Eagles are injured right now. What happens when these injured guys start coming back? Folks, they just won one of the toughest games on their schedule, facing the reigning NFC champion 49ers in San Francisco. They won that game. Super Bowl winning head coach. One of the better quarterbacks in the league. Again, a top third quarterback. Right? Right? The Philadelphia Eagles right now, if you thought the Cowboys were a bargain at 28 to 1, understand the Eagles, and I'm just telling you here, I hope I'm wrong, I'm a Giants fan, I believe in Santa, I'd like miracles to happen, but I believe the winner of the NFC East, who's going to be in the playoffs, is going to be either Dallas or Philly. Folks, you're getting Philadelphia today, October the 5th. At 33 to 1. 
See, this is how you beat Vegas. In other words, in December, when you're looking at your betting portfolio, understand, the team doesn't have to win the Super Bowl for you to cash in. Because you're getting such huge leverage later in the season, if there's a playoff game where you say, man, Philadelphia can't win this, then you could ask yourself the other question, how much money did I bet on Philly? If it's 10 bucks, then you say, okay, well, let me bet 20 bucks against them. If I win that bet, then I will have doubled my money off the exercise. Right? Philadelphia at 33 to 1, in my opinion, is a must part of your betting portfolio. Understand, casual gamblers aren't figuring out the logistics. They're thinking, oh, Philly lost some games. Right? They're thinking, well, how many teams are better than Philly in the league? Folks, I don't care how many teams are better than Philly in the league. Philly right now is leading the NFC East. Somebody is going to come out of the NFC East and make the playoffs. That's just the way the world works. Understand, too, you also have wild cards. If you look at Philly and you're thinking to yourself, wow, Carson Wentz is pretty rough. Wow, this defense has some players. Wow, this head coach takes chances on fourth down. He's a risk taker and a successful one, a Super Bowl winning risk taker. Then the minute they get up in the 33 to 1 range, you have to say, you know what, I'm going to put some money down on this team and have them be a part of my betting portfolio. Let's talk about another team. You just saw them beat up on the Dallas Cowboys. Understand, this team has been bad for so long that they now have some high picks. Miles Garrett, freak athlete, one of the best at rushing the passer, physically more dominant than 90% of the league. He was picked first in the draft. Baker Mayfield, folks, he's now in his third year. He was picked first in the draft. Nick Chubb, a guy on my fantasy team, Ran for over 40 yards early in that Cowboy game. Then got hurt. So then, of course, Cleveland has depth. This is a new day. They bring in Kareem Hunt. Right? That guy's running all over the Cowboys. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to start to think to themselves, you know what, maybe this Cleveland team has an excellent rushing attack. And they're deep. Right? And they're deep. Let's talk about the wide receivers. How many touchdowns did Odell Beckham Jr. score yesterday? It's on the running play that you saw the burst. When he's on his game, he's one of the best in the game. Right? The other wide receiver, Jarvis Landry, his boy from back in the day, right? Jarvis Landry is a pass catching machine. Just look at his stats. Look at the number of receptions year after year. Now you look at this Cleveland team. You look at the talent. And then you hear that they're going off at 40 to 1 to win it all. 40 to 1 to win it all. If I bet $2.50 on Cleveland right now, I have the possibility of winning $100 in profit if they win the Super Bowl. Now, my point to you is simply, look, if it gets too hot, if Cleveland does well, but looks like they're not going to make the playoffs, then late in the season, you can say, you know what, let me bet against Cleveland here. Right, let me bet against Cleveland and get back my original investment on the Browns. Understand, if you win that bet, okay, you didn't lose anything. If Cleveland continues winning, well, you got a nice problem. A team you bet on to win the Super Bowl who is actually going to make the playoffs. Let's talk about another talented team. Right? How many touchdowns does Dalvin Cook have to score 
before you realize that the Minnesota Vikings have an effective rushing attack. Let's be clear here, too. I know people are schizophrenic on Kirk Cousins. Right? I know when things are going well, you hear Kirk Cousins is a great quarterback. Um, he signs a contract. The team offered him guaranteed money. Right? Everyone loves Kirk Cousins. People go back through their records and they realize, you know, Kirk Cousins has been one of the more effective quarterbacks in this league. But when things go bad, people hate Kirk Cousins. Some people just have it that way in life. Right? There's no in-between. There's no, hey, Kurt's a decent quarterback. No, no. It's either Kirk Cousins is one of the best or he's one of the worst. Well, as a gambler, look, you, you just want to profit off the mood swings the public has, don't you? This Minnesota Viking team last year went into New Orleans in the playoffs. They made the playoffs. You're dealing with a team that made the playoffs in the most recent season. They go into New Orleans, they beat the Saints. This is the team that eliminated the Saints. This is a team with recent playoff experience. Now I understand a lot of guys have left Minnesota. I understand some people are cringing on the defense, even though Mike Zimmer, the head coach, is a defensive guru. But at a certain price, the speculation is worth it. I know Green Bay in the division is off to a fast start. Okay, fair enough, right? I understand there's some teams there in the NFC who are going to be troublesome this year who weren't in past years, right? The Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I get it. But Minnesota is loaded. And believe it or not, they're so hated right now that you can get them at 50 to 1. 50 to 1. Understand the Cleveland Browns, who did not make the playoffs last year, are more expensive by an order of magnitude than the Minnesota Vikings. In other words, two bucks bet on the Cleveland Browns at 40 to 1. If you win there, you win 80 bucks. Two bucks bet on the Vikings, by contrast. If you win there, you win a hundred bucks. There's a twenty dollar spread there. For every two bucks bet. In terms of potential winnings. Folks, this is lunacy. I don't know what can be said. Kirk Cousins is still there. Dalvin Cook is still there. The defense is going to tighten up over time. Understand, Minnesota's defense is not the only defense looking a bit shaky. Right? Seattle's defense. Supposed to be highly vaunted. They've looked a bit shaky. How did that Baltimore defense look against Kansas City on that Monday night game? Right? Defenses aren't quite together yet. They're gelling. If the casino is going to pay you 50 to 1 for the Vikings to win it all, I'll be their huckleberry. Understand, at these odds, I can start hedging the bet in mid-December. Right? I can say, you know what? Wow, the Vikings look a little flat. I have my doubts. I'll bet against them then. Understand, too, if you play your cards right, you're going to find that when December comes around, you have leverage on multiple teams in multiple conferences. That's your dream scenario. So then you have the power based on a minimal investment because that's what leverage does. Minimal investment, possible maximum outcome. Then you have the opportunity to throw money here, throw money there, even out the risk, win if either team wins. So, the Cowboys here at 28 to 1, that's a bargain. The Eagles here at 33 to 1, 
that's a bargain. Folks, somebody has to win the NFC East, as hard as that is to believe. Right? The Cleveland Browns. I know it's a tough division. Trust me. Right? Ravens, Steelers, hell, these days even the Bengals are a cause for concern. But how much talent does it take before you say, wow, this team is talented? How many teams have a backfield with Nick Chubb? And I understand that MRI is pending as I make this video. But with Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, how many teams have a backfield like that? Let's face it, too. When Baker Mayfield is hot, woo, there might be a high variance with Baker Mayfield. But when he's hot, folks, he can hang with anybody. Right? He won the Heisman for a reason. Wasn't he promising his first year? He had a slow second year. Now it's his third year. Let's also be real, too. It's not like the team has given him consistent coaching. There's an upside there with Baker Mayfield. You look at his background. It's kind of like Jimmy Butler's background. Right, Jimmy Butler had to go the JUCO route. Was not recruited by a D1 school. I'm talking about the Miami Heat basketball player. Then, of course, he ends up on Marquette after attending junior college. He ends up on the Big East team. Then, of course, he's in the pros, hardly plays his first year. Now, of course, he's dropping triple doubles on LeBron James in an NBA Finals. Right? He's getting a max salary. Well, let's look at Baker Mayfield. Right? Wasn't he a walk-on on like two different places? Ends up with the Heisman Trophy in college? Joins a Cleveland team. Guess what? The team's much better now than when he joined. Finally, the Minnesota Vikings. Folks, you know, some bets make themselves. If you walk in the casino and they tell you, you know, this team that still has the same quarterback, it still has the same running back, it still has Thielen, it still has a bunch of talent from last year, this team that you saw make the playoffs, that you saw beat New Orleans in the playoffs, right, that team, you're getting 50 to 1 odds on. Folks, you know, you don't have to know the rest of the story. That's a casino mispricing. Don't overthink it. Take advantage of it. Right? Vikings just won. They'll get it together. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Let me go one step further, too. I know the NFC West is tough. Okay, great. One of my rules of thumb is to watch teams that are undervalued because of injuries early, where the injured guy is going to be back. Now, the San Francisco 49ers, and it still pains me, still pains me, right? I had the Niners in the Super Bowl. Don't get me wrong. I was on both sides of the play because of my technique. But I would have made a lot more if the Niners won. They were up by 10 in the fourth quarter. That's how close they came to beating Kansas City. Now you're telling me that the Niners right now, uh, I see the line was plus 1,600 before their more, most recent game. Then, of course, they lost to Philly. Now, I haven't checked this morning, but I'm guessing you're getting the Niners at greater than 16 to 1 odds. Right, folks. Head coach Kyle Shanahan has been to the Super Bowl as both an offensive coordinator and as a head coach. Jimmy Garoppolo, forget all this hype and all this other nonsense. Look at the numbers from last year. Jimmy Garoppolo is one of the better young quarterbacks in the league. He'll be back soon. Yesterday's game featured Nick Mullins. Right? C.J. Beathard came in to finish up. Folks, that's not the A-team. Understand, the Niners have been beaten up of late. 
Now, you saw the Rams struggle. That's what the game was. I'm a Giants fan. I looked at that game closely. You saw the Rams struggle against the New York Giants, right? This is not a playoff year for us. Again, I hope I'm wrong, but, you know, reality is reality, right? The Rams aren't that tough this year. Yeah, they have Aaron Donald. Yeah, they have Cooper Cup. Todd Gurley's in Atlanta, folks. Let me say, too, you just saw Arizona struggle. I know Seattle is off to a big start. Sooner or later, there'll be some reversion to the mean. Now, you mean to tell me that I can get a team that's a reigning conference champion where the vast majority of the players are back? Right? George Kittle is still a 49er, folks. Raheem Mostert is still a 49er. Right? Looks like the Ayuk guy they got in the draft is a starter. In other words, they had a great draft. John Lynch, the GM, knows what he's doing. And you mean to tell me that I'm going to be able to get them at greater than 16 to 1? Right? The reason I know about the 16 to 1 is just looking at my bet sheet here, I see I took the Niners at 16 to 1 on September 30th. <laughs> right? You're getting even better odds now. Folks, you're not going to find that kind of value in November. Right? This would be as silly as the Kansas City Chiefs starting off a little bit slow with a backup quarterback. Not Pat Mahomes, who's out for a couple of games, but somebody else. And then the market giving you double-digit odds on them. Right? The Niners are a team to look at. I know it looks like a tough road. I know the schedule is tough. I'm in the Bay Area. Right? But understand, this team is tough. Richard Sherman's been out. This Niner defense, who had Carson Wentz bottled up for most of yesterday's game, is going to get even better when guys like Richard Sherman return. Right? So... In my opinion, you want to look hard at the Niners, the Vikings, the Eagles, the Cowboys, and Browns. These are casino mispricings. Your goal in betting is to locate the casino mispricings. It's not to be a fan, right? I'm not here pubbing the Giants as a pick. It's uh, not to be a fan. It's actually to spot the mispricings, understand whenever they pop up during the season. You have to realize that that's where the value is. You don't have to fully believe in the team. Right? The Vikings, you're telling me that if this season played out 50 times, the Vikings would only win, in fact, 51 times. The Vikings would only win once? A team that made the playoffs and won in the playoffs just last season? I'm not buying it. That's how I see it. These are the teams I'm looking at to place a position on. Understand, I already have positions on teams like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, but here's where the value is. Right? Right now. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.